the kind of accessibility was just nowhere and there's definitely a lot more that should be done when you couldn't go to school and you're just like falling further and further and further behind so it's it's great let's talk about chronic illness everybody and welcome to episode three of let's talk about chronic illness today we're going to be talking about education and school and i am joined by charlotte hi (laughs) um can you introduce yourself of course um i'm charlotte i am 20 and i'm currently in my final year um at university nice and for anyone who doesn't know i'm becca and i'm 19 and we both have Emmy, oh, yeah. which is fun, <laughs> and we both went to the same school. So yeah, so I asked on social media for people to send in some questions. Right, what were the best and worst aspects of being in education with a chronic illness? Mm, good question. I'd say the one of the best things was it did give you some sort of structure and kind of like goal to work towards you could kind of manage where so kind of you knew where you were at and you knew where you were supposed to be or your peers were and it kind of gave you this target to kind of get to I suppose but then the worst bit is you couldn't do anything really to reach that so you kind of could see how far behind you were falling so Mm -hmm. a bit of a double-edged sword I think yeah yeah and I think like another sort of worst aspect is sort of when you couldn't go to school and you're just like falling further and further and further behind because there was just nothing that could be done (laughs) definitely and I think that's one of the things as well like the because there's exams at the end of every year and particularly you know when we were kind of GCSE level it's so much pressure because it's not like you can just or I mean you can take a year out but that's a whole year and that was quite like oh my god at the time Mm -hmm. so it's kind of the pressure that you're falling behind and you've got to catch up quickly because exams are in like three months and (laughs) you haven't got long yeah so yeah that wasn't fun yeah and I think it's also that sort of like when you're at school you can like tell your teachers okay so I have Emmy I'm not going to be here all the time I'm probably not going to do as well as other people but when it comes to like GCSEs and stuff you can't just like write on your exam paper sorry yeah. I fail, so I'm not going to do very well it's like you yeah you have that pressure to still sort of perform to the same standard as everyone else so it's definitely definitely that's such a good point <laughs> yeah. so what what year were you in when you sort of first became ill I was in year 10 and it was basically almost the end of the spring term in year 10 and basically the rest of year 10 was just a complete write-off like if I made it to kind of like five days the rest of year 10 that was amazing um and then year 11 I think it was I was in about 25 percent of the time my attendance said um so yeah it was it wasn't exactly easy what about you were you I think you were the same right yeah I was in year 10 so yeah from actually probably January of year 10 so like pretty much exactly five years ago was sort of when things started to go downhill and then it was sort of all right in year 10 at the end of year 10 I like dropped a load of subjects from my GCSE so I was like no and then once I got into year 11 that was really when like the fatigue and stuff started to really have an impact so yeah I love looking back at my attendance (laughs) and being like oh (laughs) I know it was brilliant like just just the kind of seeing it you're like oh okay that's quite not but yeah no exactly the same I forgot to say that but um the doctors over the summer of kind of between year 10 and 11 were like you will drop GCSEs I'm like, I don't really want to that you will mm-hmm. so I don't know if you had the same I assume you did <laughs> yeah yeah it was basically the same it was sort of like yes you 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 are going to drop subjects if you could go back what would you have liked to have been done differently I think 
maybe I would have liked there to have been a little bit more effort put in from like teachers to sort of maybe try and like learn a bit more about um, ME and about chronic illness and maybe they could have done like a little bit more research into like Microsoft Teams and that sort of thing to try and find a way to make that work. I think that's definitely something that I would have liked to have been done. Yeah. Yeah. No, de definitely. I think I was, I think I was a bit luckier than you in the sense that I had kind of enough of like really, really good teachers who did know about it to kind of take away from the ones who didn't. So <laughs> like they kind of carried me through, but I definitely think um, in terms of the kind of whole school experience, like not just the academics, because I mean, they were obviously quite hot on that like send, sending you work and things like that but just trying to keep you updated with friends and like the social side of school because I completely lost that so mm. the work thing was the only thing I had left so I think looking back I would have liked to be to have been like kept in the loop a little bit more with that but yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah I agree with that definitely it was sort of like yeah I felt especially once I was sort of in sick form, I felt that the teachers were like really sort of like quite pushing on me to like really, really focus on like the academic side of thing, which was fun. Like I completely understand that, but they were like so sort of forceful with that, that it was like, I had nothing left to be able to have like the social aspect and stuff. So yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely agree with you on that one. I mean, I suppose, the positive thing that I can sort of try and think is how beneficial all of this like lockdown everything is going to be for um, like other people coming into school who have chronic illness and stuff there's going to there's going to be a lot more awareness of the resources that can be used so I think that's that's what I sort of try to like keep thinking about like okay yes it wasn't around when we were at school but it is around now so that's going to be beneficial for other people 100 percent, definitely and I think the whole the whole I mean this is slightly off topic but um the whole pandemic thing and the long COVID thing it's going to make like just create so much more awareness about symptoms and struggling with fatigue and things like that so if there's one good thing to come out of it it's going to be that I think <laughs> yeah definitely definitely this one isn't really that relevant to chronic illness but I feel like it could still be quite interesting to talk about and it was what what were your favourite and least favourite subjects at school and why? Okay, um, I'm definitely biased in terms of subjects as to who taught me. Yeah. So um, that it kind of, it did change depending on um, who the teacher was, but particularly when uh, like I became ill because the teachers either went one way or the other. So um, definitely, Latin was absolute favourite um, subject, closely followed by math. Um, and then ones I just didn't like so much were definitely chemistry. And I'd say like English kind of, you know, I didn't, they weren't my favourites, but yeah, a lot of it had to do with the teachers as well, I think for me, but. Yeah, yeah, I'm exactly the same. That was sort of why I was thinking that we could sort of tie that question a little bit into the general topic of this video because it is like yeah for me definitely my favorite subject was definitely quite dependent on who the teacher was and how understanding they were yeah. psychology absolutely like favorite subject because both the teachers were just incredible and continue to be incredible because they're teaching me psychology now even when I'm not their student anymore so <laughs> And then definitely, definitely least favourite was biology. Did you ever sort of like have issues with teachers um, making incorrect assumptions about like sort of ME and stuff and thinking that it was like psychological and anything like that? Um, I, nothing kind of explicit um, particularly comes to mind. Definitely I have a memory of one who I suppose they didn't really have that much to do with but um just making sort of comments that were just 
really unnecessary it's like why we don't really speak that much why do you feel the need to randomly come up to me in the library and say something it was just weird but I think I found that more with friends than teachers but I'm sure it was there for some of them but it was just never vocalized but yeah. I don't know about you yeah so so what sort of like comments was this teacher saying if you don't mind me asking <laughs> No, not at all. I'm trying to, um, it's five years ago. I'm very old now, so I need to just <laughs> think a minute. <laughs> um, but it was, it was things like, um, I would be there one day and then obviously not the next, or I'd be doing something. I think there was one time that I was using my energy on something not school related, which was completely rare for me. Um, I think this was before, like I was properly diagnosed and it all kicked off. Um, and he made some really shady comment about oh funny she can do this and then randomly rocks up like I haven't seen her for two weeks and then she rocked up there I was like okay but <laughs> cool yeah <laughs> that was one of my favorites but yeah <laughs> yeah I definitely had issues with teachers thinking that it was all sort of like psychological and thinking that I wasn't coming to lessons because I didn't like the lesson or just like no <laughs> that's that's not not the situation at all and I think the fact that it's an invisible illness yeah. really didn't help because they couldn't like see when you were struggling like you could say that you were struggling but then they'd be like mm, well mm. <laughs> yeah yeah definitely I think if you could have kind of seen it it would have been definitely a lot easier to kind of explain to people and to get people to believe you which that was the thing that annoyed me I was like I'm telling you is that not enough for you to believe me but for some people it wasn't and that that was just one thing that really annoyed me yeah yeah um did you find um like the school nurses quite helpful did they like do like a care plan and stuff or um I don't really think I had that much to do with them to be honest I don't I definitely no kind of plan I I came up with a plan with um like the kind of specialist doctors and stuff and then kind of went in and it was like this is the plan mm -hmm. um so no but I didn't really ever go to them for that kind of thing I don't know you probably had more experience with them than I did <laughs> yeah I had a lot of experience with them definitely they sort of yeah put together like this whole care plan and like risk assessment thing it was like intense but oh, it was, I that. yeah but it was quite nice to sort of have the school nurses there who were very understanding and believed everything 100 percent and did everything that they could to make things easier so that was a definite positive yeah maybe i should have yeah i just lit i didn't even think about kind of speaking to them about it i just but yeah i mean maybe i should have done because sounds like they were great with you <laughs> yeah definitely I but I did find it annoying that the medical center was like up a million flights of stairs <laughs> yes that is one thing that I was going to say about the school and I think it's because um it's an old building um it wasn't accessible at all the kind of accessibility was just nowhere and there's definitely a lot more that should be done about that because I mean it's just not really on and I know there's only so much you can do with a building but like access you know accessibility is a huge thing and it really needs to be addressed I think yeah definitely because it's like yeah because obviously our school is in Bath which is quite like a historical city like a lot of very old buildings our school basically looks like Hogwarts. So <laughs> there's nothing really that could be done like internally. Like they couldn't put like lifts in or anything like that because that just wouldn't work. But yeah, they could definitely like add more ramps. That sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Although I do remember when I was in year 11 and I was spending like a lot of my school day in the medical center just like lying down in bed but then I started using the wheelchair so obviously couldn't get up to the medical center <laughs> they put like a little camp bed like a little fold-up bed in Mr. office 
<laughs> oh, bless. Like, one of the best things that they ever did for me. Like, so I could just go <laughs> in there whenever, like, I didn't have a lesson. Oh, that's so sweet. And she very kindly just, like, vacated her office so that I could just, like, have a little sleep. Oh, I love that. I, I love that. Uh, okay, another question was how much did your illness impact your education? Oh, very good question. I'm going to say, like, quite a lot, obviously quite a lot. I think um, it just impacted the whole kind of taking education quite broadly, which may or may not be how the question was meant. But as I said earlier about the whole social thing, I think academically, it obviously not going to three quarters of class is pretty self-explanatory of how much you missed out on but um I think to a certain extent that didn't matter as much to me in this um as much as kind of the whole just being there and the social element and the kind of friends and you know just the general life aspect of it um but yeah I mean as we said we weren't there so it impacted hugely but um I found that the subjects that I was going to take forward I just prioritized so I actually knew them and then the rest of it was just a bit like playing a game for the exam and doing the best you could and then moving on yeah but, yeah yeah definitely yeah I think for me it impacted a lot because I never got to do my a-levels yeah because I was sort of there for like first year of a-levels I was there for like the first term of year 13 and then I was like <laughs> so I just yeah so definitely it's definitely sort of changed a lot about what my plans were for the future in terms of like higher education and that sort of thing yeah yeah no definitely that's one thing that I've been quite lucky with in that I'm obviously at uni and because it's a lot more flexible um it's it's almost easier than school in a way that it's not rigid you can do like you can work whenever you want to work you can obviously if things are recorded you can watch them back whenever you want um so it's a lot less pressure but it's just the sort of the staging thing isn't it you've got to get through the a levels to then get to uni to then be able to because i think it would fit much better with kind of a fluid program for getting better but you've got to get the a levels first so <laughs> <laughs> definitely so like with um like a lot of your lectures being recorded and stuff can you sort of like watch them as many times as you want yeah you can watch them as many times as you want and you can watch them on kind of at a slower pace if the lecture is talking too quickly you can pause it whenever you want to make notes which obviously you can't do in a live lecture yeah. um so it's it's great it's like it's really um accessible from that point yeah of view. That's great because I suppose like if you were in like a live lecture but maybe you were feeling like a bit brain foggy or something then at least you can then sort of watch it again later if there were bits that you're just like not a clue. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, that's exactly it, it's great. Yeah, Question, which we've sort of already discussed quite a bit but it was um, how do your school, how did your school accommodate your chronic illness? So in some ways they accommodated it really well um like sort of what i've already said about them having like a care plan and putting a bed <laughs> like on the ground floor for me um i found sort of especially when i was in like year 10 and year 11 when i was um using the wheelchair that was like when i first started the school had like such a good plan with that they had like a timetable of um teaching assistants like so i'd have like one teaching assistant like allocated to me for the day and they'd come and see me in the morning and i would tell them what time i would need them to take me from one lesson to another and stuff so that was really good and then with the sort of fatigue and stuff there wasn't really that much done to accommodate it really like, as I've already said, like, I tried to suggest things, like recording lessons, and they just didn't go for that at all. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of my thoughts on that. 
I remember one thing that I found really annoying with kind of you because I was never in um, a wheelchair but it was that no one else apart from like staff or certain staff members could push you in the wheelchair so you'd just be left to sit there everybody else walked off I was like but if you kind of took a step outside the school grounds I could suddenly push you it was just it seemed crazy to me but um that was that's probably just kind of like bureaucratic stuff that the school needed to sort out but it was that just really frustrated me for you because you just sat there like I can't move <laughs> yeah it was like health and safety issues that they couldn't push me but it's like we're in sick form we're all adults so <laughs> can't we do what we I think want? we can manage <laughs> yeah yeah so did you did you find that they like that certain teachers were quite accommodating for you and certain teachers weren't or yeah definitely I think the main thing for me was kind of the um the kind of from an academic perspective but I think what was really good for me is I think generally teachers would send you the stuff and that but some of them would really take the time out to just make sure you're okay and make sure you understood um what was going on and I remember there was one um subject in particular where there was coursework and it was you had to kind of go on a field trip to to do it and obviously I couldn't go and the teacher literally spent so much time sitting down with me afterwards taking me through everything that I'd missed out on just so I was up to speed and I honestly couldn't have done it without so that like things like that were amazing and yeah. then other teachers would literally just be like oh I didn't even notice you went in my lesson and that wasn't as helpful but <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just didn't even notice you weren't there <laughs> you know <laughs> right <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there were definitely teachers that I felt sort of went above and beyond to 100%. make sure that, like, th that we were able to do as much as we could. And then there were some teachers that did, like, the bare minimum. <laughs> yep. <laughs> such a variety. <laughs> there was, there was really such a variety. But um, I think on the whole, I was quite lucky in that at least the ones that mattered to me, I had the support so that was really nice yeah yeah so this isn't one of the questions that was sent in but I just thought of it um, <laughs> I was thinking that we could maybe talk a bit about what like could be done better in the future for other people who have chronic illnesses going into school um because I was thinking that something which I think should maybe be done at some point is um there should be like resources available to teachers for like a whole variety of different chronic illnesses so that if they have a student who has a chronic illness they can easily find the resources to like find out more information about it the best way to sort of help them to manage it and that sort of thing i think that should be a thing <laughs> definitely definitely and I, I completely agree with that and I know that there are kind of supposed to be some sort of um guidelines uh on different kind of charity sites and that but there's nothing obvious or explicit you'd have to go hunting for it which obviously I appreciate loads of teachers just don't have the time to do mm -hmm. so I think it would be really good I know there are loads of training days but also I'm thinking kind of the students as well the PSHE lessons that we have there are so many of those that it would be crazy not to replace with something like let's talk about kind of different illnesses in this sort of way because they do it with other illnesses but I just think making sure everyone's on the same page would make such a difference so they know how to help they know what might happen you know kind of just and also getting people to believe it as well I feel like that is half the battle yeah absolutely yeah especially with like invisible illness it's sort of getting them getting people to understand that you can't see it so you can't just like look at someone and assume they're fine yeah but yeah <laughs> yeah I think definitely that'd be such a good idea for them to like do it in PSHE yeah and like as I already said earlier the fact that everyone now is using like zoom and microsoft teams and stuff is going to be so beneficial for people in the future because I feel like now if like three years down the line someone if, if there was like someone like you or like me who asked 
um, the certain teacher, <laughs> um, is there any way of recording lessons? The answer would probably be yes, we can do that. So I think that is definitely a good thing. Yeah, no, I genuinely, I know I've spoken about it, but I think that is completely huge and really, hopefully really positive. And I mean, at least to me, it does not seem difficult to implement at all. I mean, as we've said, unis are doing it. <laughs> Everyone's now doing it because of COVID. So I don't understand why they wouldn't carry it on. Yeah, definitely. And cool. So that was all the questions. Well, yeah, I think we basically covered everything. So, Perfect. yeah, thank you very much for joining me for this. Thanks for letting me join. <laughs>